Thank you, Emil. Good evening, everyone. My name is Raquel Arredondo. I'm the Associate Director for Outreach, Engagement, and Professional Development here at the college. I'm honored to introduce to you all our final speaker for this evening, Natasha Filipov. Natasha is a student at the Laveau College of Business studying marketing and communications. Natasha's TED Talk is entitled, This Blonde Means Business, and is about women in the workforce and their experiences with gender equality. Please join me in welcoming Natasha to the stage. Thanks, Raquel, and thank you to my other mentor, Keelan Mahone, back there, who, um, both of which who have been so supportive to me throughout the development of this talk. The famous meme, right? Most of us know it. For those of you who don't, it is from a popular movie, Legally Blonde. And it's meant to be funny, and it is, right? But should it be? Elle took the same Elle sats, sat in the same classes, and worked just as hard, if not harder, than Warner to get into Harvard. And yet we see from the expression on his face, he doesn't take her seriously. It's funny because it's pop culture, and it's meant to be. But it's not because it's something that I experience every day or almost every day, in the workforce and the business world. I actually had an Ellen Warner encounter earlier this year here in LeBeau. I was casually conversing with a male peer of mine, talking about classes, schedules, and the upcoming co-op cycle. He asked me where I was headed next for my second co-op. I'd give him an honest answer of the rundown of companies and, and roles I was choosing between, and he kind of gave me this, this look, the Warner look. This is the Warner look. <laughs> How many of you females have ever received it? <laughs> he told me that he wanted one of the roles that I was selected for. There were so many things he could have said to recognize and acknowledge politely my efforts, but instead he looked at me and said, it's because you're a girl, and the interviewer liked the way you looked. Right. Not because of my multitude of campus involvement and leadership experience, 3.75 GPA, professional background, civic engagement, personality, interview, skill sets that I worked to master to get the job. I definitely got that job offer solely based on the way I look. Exactly, right? This is an example of the ignorance that's perpetuated by others, not exclusive to men in the workforce. It's about time that we really address gender inequality and talk about it. This blonde means business. <clears throat> now, I bet some of you are sitting there in the audience thinking, oh, poor, blonde, white Natasha. Here she is, right? Getting up here to hear herself speak just to get to speak about how she spoke about herself later. You guys know I'll be on Instagram. She's <laughs> following my blog page. <laughs> what makes me diverse? Guess what? Just like you, I am so much more than my gender and my physical appearance. Society puts us into these bins and often categorizes us by one thing, our orientation, our gender, our weight, our looks. How is that one principle celebratory of our individual diversity, let alone the diversity of our world? How is it inclusive of who we are, but more importantly, of who we're trying to become? I, Natasha Filipov, am a student. I'm a young professional. I'm a content creator. I'm an NFL cheerleader. I'm a choreographer, teacher, dancer. I'm a daughter. Shout out to my parents. <laughs> all of these things that make me me, and yet the world can't seem to recognize them all. I'm either the cheerleader on Sunday, business student on Tuesday, Teacher on Wednesday, I am me, and me is all of who I am. But by the time you're done categorizing me and putting me into all of these bins, you've stored away my greatest asset, which is my own diversity, my largest strength, my own unique combination of skill sets and skills that make me an all-around better employee and person, adding to the diversity of your company. 
I'm taking back any part of myself that I ever rescinded to fit somewhere that wasn't accepting of who I am. And I don't need any validation. This blonde means business. I use myself as an example, but I stand here and speak on behalf of the gender which I represent. Females can only be one thing in this world. They can only be pretty, or smart, or nice. They definitely can't be all three, or a combination of the various skill sets they own. And furthermore, all of these examples of biases are perpetuated by our media leaders as well as in the business world. Here's what entrepreneur Evan Thornley thinks about women. They're like men, <laughs> just cheaper. Let's define cheaper. In 2017, just two years ago, that meant that female full-time year-round employees made only 80.5 cents for every male dollar for the same job. That's a gender wage gap of 20%. Here's another one, Matt Lauer. You remember him, right? Yeah. He made some headlines recently. In an interview with uh, CEO Mary Barrett, he said, you are a mom. Given the pressures of the job at General Motors and your role at home, can you do both well? I don't know, Matt, can you? Can you be a dad to your three kids and handle your responsibilities? There is that double standard, and especially in corporate America. If a woman has to leave early to tend to her children, she has to practically turn her cheek to avoid the backlash she'll face and criticism from colleagues that claim that commitment to her children makes her less committed to her work. If a male colleague leaves for the same reason, well, he gets home and on his doorstep is a Father of the Year award from www.itsamansworld.com. I mean, <laughs> this is what happens, guys. <laughs> Gender equality is defined as treating men and women equally. Same rights, same opportunities, same status. But despite our gender difference, are we really, as the definition cites, equal? Why then are we not treated as so? I was doing some research for this TED Talk, right? What gives me the credibility to stand here before you all and talk on this topic? And this article came up by PwC, entitled, The Female Millennial, A New Era of Talent. I laughed out loud for a good five minutes of this. A company as progressive and diverse, with such inclusive initiatives as PwC, and yet, it's ironic. Would you ever see a title, New Era of Male Talent? <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. Men in the audience, some of my friends, I'm not criticizing you. You are just as important to society as the gender that I stand here and represent, but you are no greater. We're equal. This world is not a boys club. Women, we need to get out of our own way, too. The world and the workforce needs to get out of our way, but we need to also get out of our own way. In today's society and culture, and with the growing popularity of movements like me Too and Time's Up, we're demanding change on all fronts, not just the workforce. It's time. It's time. The only way that we enact change is by stepping into our power together, women. It's 2019, and it's time. Not on International Women's Days. Not on the days of women's marches. Not when an incident happens to you in the workforce. Not when the male boss invites you back to his hotel room. Not when the graduate school professor tells you to cut your hair to be taken more seriously in your industry. Not when you hear a sleazy comment made about your colleague. Not when someone makes a sleazy comment about you. Not when you hear about how it will take women of color so many more years to get equal pay than it will white women. It's time. We need to step into our power together. We need to all mean business. Head basketball coach of Notre Dame, Muffet McGraw, um, is a fierce and tenacious advocate for balancing the scales across all professions. One of my favorite quotes from her is, I'm getting tired of this novelty of the idea of the first XYZ woman. When is it going to become the norm instead of the exception? Furthermore, she goes on to talk about this lack of women in leadership. 
how are we solving this, this gap? This gap of women leaders, not just in business, but across all professions. And I'll tell you right now, there is no shortage of talented, capable, and more than competent women to fill the same CEO, partner, chairman, boardman position that men are holding. There's no shortage. It's time that we step into that role, women. We are not victims, but the world pegs us as so. We are roughly 47% of the U.S. labor force. We are not a minority. We are 50.8% of the U.S. population, a majority. I think that there's this idea that women just deserve to be hired, right? Equal representation. This blonde means business, but I am not a fan of the term and commonality of women in business. Women don't deserve increased representation just because. Women deserve the opportunity to be assessed on the same bases and standards as men. We deserve to be heard before we are judged solely based on the way we look when we walk in an interview. I am a proponent for equality in the workforce, not women specifically. And in the words of Comcast Chief Diversity Officer David Cohen, I advocate for equality of opportunity. Whether the best candidate be male or woman, let's put her in the job, or him. Equality of opportunity, not of one particular sex. Lastly, I'll close with saying that all of the small-minded people, the naysayers, who even after this talk still don't want to listen, I hope that you'll see, as I've previewed today, that a well-educated, passionate woman can have a pretty substantial impact and opinion, wearing stilettos too. <laughs> this is just the start of all I have to say, because this blonde means business. Wow. Thank you, Natasha, and Mal, Sam, and Tony. I think I can speak for everyone in just saying, saying just how inspiring you for tonight. One more round of applause. Woo! And incoming students, you guys, if you were inspired here tonight to share a little bit about your story, I do have two opportunities I want to highlight to our grad students. In the next couple weeks, you will receive an email regarding a DNI video challenge. Definitely look into this and pursue it if you have the opportunity. To both undergrad and grads, we do host TEDx LeBeau both in the fall and the spring, so be on the lookout for that, that fall speaker search because this could be you guys up here in the fall. Thank you so much again to our speakers, to our family, friends, and employers who have joined us today. And I now to close invite everyone to join us in the Rose Terrace for a networking reception. So thank you guys all very much. If you're here for the week of undergrad excellence and need stickers, come to the front and I'll get them for you.